In this video we're making this cool lamp which is using neopixels and cement. Check out the show notes for the chapters and the build doc. Okay, so there's quite a shopping list for this project and I'll just go with the 3D printed parts to start with. So you've got the, the moulds on the outside. It doesn't matter what colour you print these in, you can print them in any colour you like. I just always have white here. Um, so the moulds, you can they take a little while to print but you can use them over and over again, right? So once they're done, they're sort of done. And even if you just wanted to print the statue itself without making a lamp, you can make as many as you want. You've got these rings which hold the near pixels in place and they sort of just clip on top of these holders and it holds the the lampshade in place itself. This lampshade's made with clear PLA. I don't think it'd work very well with white PLA, just the lights won't shine through. It's got the um, knurling on the inside and it's smooth on the outside. The mounting brackets, these brackets hold the mould in place when you're pouring the concrete. This tube is for running the wires from the base of the model to the top. Uh, this is the mounting bracket, there's the blank, and there's just the little holder for the circuit board. For the cement pouring side of things, we need some general purpose cement. Just, just cement, not anything with aggregate, no sand mixed in, no you know, fiberglass fibers, just plain cement. If I get to mix it all in, optional mixing stick makes life a lot easier and a tray just to put it all on because it does get messy you don't want cement going everywhere um, and also optionally some clips just to hold the side of the mold i mean those brackets are made are seem good enough but just to make sure and i'd suggest a respirator and some safety goggles and maybe gloves as far as electronics we just need some general purpose hookup wire um, some single core electrical wire, you probably find this, well don't find it in your house, but usually you find it in the house, so we just need that for the, the rings, a driver board, or the ESB01. So you need both of those components. And the Neopixels themselves, this is a Neopixel ring, these are individual, and there's 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. And as far as general hardware, you'll need a soldering iron and some solder, some screws, check the show notes for the exact details and a set of scales would be good too to measure out your cement. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is mold our figurine because it's going to take a couple of days to set. So what we've got to do is we've got to put in our blanks because these will be replaced by our light mounts at the end and this we want to be stuck in the top of the, the statue well forever really. So to have these stay in place I'm just going to use a little bit of blue tape. I've used glue stick before but I think this might be better so we'll practice live this is all keyed so there's no there's no way you can really get it wrong well you probably could if you tried hard enough <clears throat> and the next part we want is this for the wires to go in so it's going to be stuck in there as far as it will go we want this about level with the, the base so I'm not sure the best way for that yet so I'm just going to put the rest of the mold together so once it's in the ring down the bottom it should all technically be lined up and this one I'm just going to find position we think is going to be the best and then we've got a locking ring on top which acts as a bit of a funnel because the cement will always sink because the water evaporates there's air bubbles and all sorts of things so we've just got a bit of a manifold I guess just to give you a higher level of cement when you're pouring and it's going to sit like that so we're going to have too much cement probably and it's going to fill in this hole so I'm just going to put something in there like a bit of pull noodle so it doesn't get filled in with the cement when I'm filling it up so next thing we do is we mix the cement. So I'm just going to uh, mix the concrete now in this garden variety bucket. Uh, I've got a face mask on during this so you, this is just the dub over the, the top but I weighed out my cement. My mold takes 900 grams so I'm going to make one kg just for making the maths easy really. So the instructions here is it wants two thirds of water. 
So I put in 600 mils of water to go with my 1 kg of cement. So I pour the water in first. Um, if I do it the other way around, it doesn't mix quite as well. And then uh, just pour it in with like baking, I suppose. I'm by no means a cement expert, so people who are cement experts will be laughing probably at this process, but I think it's just a case of um, chucking in the water and pouring in the cement as I go, so it's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour in a mixture and just keep on adding it until I've run out of cement and just keep stirring. I was using a stick before but this um, tool is, makes life a lot easier for sure. And anyway, it's a sort of this costly day I want, I, I guess if you can look at that and then when you're mixing your own you'll get the same sort of thing but that's it's looking pretty good, it's sort of quite thick, a bit like um, fudge mixture maybe. So that's good to go, so the next thing we want to do is pour this into the mould. I've got all our cement mixed up and now I'm going to try and pour it in and hope for the best. This is the first time I've done this so normally I'd do a practice run first but I'm running out of time for this particular project. So pour it in and give it a good tap because we'll just try and get a layer bubble there. Keep your finger on this bit because all that comes out It'll be a nightmare. When the jury's out in these clips, I'm not sure if I need the clips. I'll put them on. You can see it's starting to seep out the side there, which is expected, I guess. Basically, the more time you do this, shaking it out and trying to get the bubbles out, the better result you'll get. In the end, uh, when I did before, I just poured it in and just sort of gave it a couple of taps. That's what that'll do, and uh, it was kind of terrible. So it's never going to be perfect. I just had a vacuum chamber to suck all the bubbles out, but I don't. But maybe it'll be a project in the future. Okay, let's see how we go. So this here is once it shrinks down, probably around the top of that little square box which holds the board so I'll chop all that off anyway and uh, the only concern is maybe that'll start floating maybe I should start taping it down or well, worse the hole gets filled up well shall we go so we'll leave that for now and we'll come back tomorrow but while we're doing that we'll create the lights so now uh, while we're waiting for the concrete to set we will set up the um, LED lights that go across the bottom and the top of the lamp and uh, this is yeah, these two of these you've got, so either one you can start with, it doesn't really matter. And these are the little um, LEDs that'll go in these squares. So these are square, those are square, and they fit in. It's important to note that these are directional, they've got a direction on them, so they have to go in one way, otherwise, they won't work. Um, so I need to break those off and put them in. And we need wire to go around the outside. And the circumference of this is around 350 millimeters. So you want 353 lots or 350 millimeters of this copper wire stripped back. So we'll do that as well. Okay, so the following info is pretty pivotal to the success of this method of making the lamp. So this is made out of PLA and PLA is not particularly um, good with hot temperatures. The solar iron is quite hot. So when you put this together, you've got to do it in a certain method. So it's important to put solder already on all the contacts, on all the LEDs first. So don't try and solder the wire on to a blank contact. You need to make sure there's solder on there first because you want to keep the contact home down with the um, soldering iron. You don't want it on there for too long. And you want all your copper already inside the galleries so there's no so don't go and solder the outside one and then the next one in and the next one in because this material is so soft when it gets a little bit of heat because the heat's obviously going through the entire wire they start to melt and this form and it's you've got to throw it away and start again so you want to get your copper all already already in, in position 
and then solder everything when it's all in position so if it does melt it doesn't really matter it's just gonna be, if anything it's gonna be better because it's gonna hold all the copper in place once you're all wired up just uh, briefly hook up your controller and remember it's they're uh, all going one direction and just to check it's working it's looking pretty good so once those are all wired up good to go uh, we can fit them into the holders that go inside the lamp okay so once we've got our uh, lamps wired up we need to hook it up to the holders which will be holding them in the lampshade in place so there's whole cavities growing through the back so you can run the wires through and they're kind of semi discreetly hidden I might make a cover on the back of there to hide them completely just depending how time goes so this one will be on the bottom this one will be on the top like that uh, for this one we need four wires to power obviously uh, ground and five volts the data wire coming from the controller and off the end of here, because WLED just sees one big row of lights, we need to continue the data line up to the upper lights. So we're just going to hook all this up to the wiring on here. Like all the wiring diagrams and everything will be in the uh, build doc in the show notes. So if it looks a bit confusing, just check out the show notes and it could be a lot clearer. But essentially, these will hook up to this lamp the circuit the data circuit will go through and then come out the orange wire and go to the upper lamp okay so it's the following day and we come to unmold it um i poured all the extra cement into this container which is way thicker than this and it's apart from some scum on the top it's pretty sure she's good to go what i forgot to do yesterday was i usually spray it inside the mold with some just some canola cooking oil just as a mold release so um, it'll be interesting to see how this goes, but we'll pull it apart and see what happens. So I've just got a few taps to loosen it up. Come off pretty easy. There you go, it's, it's probably my best one so far, to be honest. So it's awesome. The tubes there for my wires. And no fluid got in the bottom, well, a little bit of fluid got in the bottom, but not much at all. So that one is to winner. So this mess of wires here is how it's all going to go together. It looks like a bit of shambles at the moment, but um, it's all pretty straightforward. So we've got our model, which is nice and set. The circuit board's going underneath, and the power's going through the middle of the, the model. Um, I've just used a old cell phone charging cable because it's got thick um, power lines within data lines so it's not taking up too much area uh, so the controller down the bottom will be residing in the thigh and uh, then goes up goes into the bottom one and then goes up into the top one the extra data line goes up into there so WLED which we're using to control all these lights just sees this as one long string of lights but on that software we can segment them in out into two different ones so it treats two of them sort of differently so I've got the wiring all going I've just got to screw it all together now and put the lampshade on and see what it looks like there it is up and running the camera doesn't really do it justice I think because you know exposures and things I'll turn the lights off here to see if you can So that's pretty much how the build goes and uh, the next video I'll be going through tuning these lights to do different things with WLED.